the Solovox speaker in all its splendor. Completely unmarked. I've no idea what model that is. Mm. Don't like those. Um, as I said on first um, examination, they seem okay. These are heavy, weighty speakers. The resonance is okay. Um, an interesting tweezer. I'm dying to see what that is when I take it out. Two ports. Um, you have two mid stroke bass drivers, which are from edge to edge, eight inches across. They're a card construction. There's nothing wrong with card if implemented well. There's a rubber surround, which is convex, not concave or inverted. So on first looks, it seems okay. First thing to do, those drivers. That's interesting. Um, these drivers are made by C's, S-E-A-S. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, quality speaker Scandinavia. Um, 21 TVEW. 15 ohms. Well, that suggests they're wired in parallel to get it down to 8 ish ohms. Um, I should find out and take them apart a bit further. Um, it's interesting because for a while there I did wonder if these were homemade jobbies but Solovox um, were known to use drivers by C's. Um, they were um, made in Norway under the original Solovox spelling S-O-L-A-R-V-O-X and then um, a company in the UK called Comet uh, rebadged them and sold them on without the R. So this is the earlier original Norwegian version with the C's drivers. The C's drivers are meant to be quite desirable. Um, That, a one inch, one and a half inch voice coil, a stamped out metallic frame, not cast. Alright, that tweeter next. Another C's driver. Um, a one and a half inch dome tweeter. So we have a collection of C's drivers here. Which, like I say, I mean, despite the stamped out frames, um, that's not so important on drivers that are 8 inches or less. I'm not sure what magnet that is. Might be worth looking into. But on the face of it, these drivers were desirable. So that doesn't account for the rubbish sound. Okay, crossover next. Um, it's a simple crossover. You have uh, two ceramic resistors. I mean, they'll last forever. Um, a rather substantial coil, which is always a good thing. Um, I think it's an iron core. Okay. There is a really cruddy um, capacitor there. I mean that's old. That's got to account for some of the sound quality loss. Hmm. Decent cabinet, decent drivers. Simple but old crossover. I wonder if replacing the capacitor would improve things considerably. Hmm. 
Mm. So I remove the crossover and it just adds to the mystery of it all. Um, the coil is air cord. It's not iron core or ferrite or anything like that. It's a massive air core coil, which means it's good. Um, good drivers, decent crossover, aged components, and I'm guessing a port implementation. Um, maybe the box, the cabinet isn't the right size, the wadding isn't spot on. But yes, just adds to the mystery of it all. Why, uh, Identical driver lineup sounds good in the Dynaco implementation and poor in the Solarbox implementation. Go figure. So, all in all, a bit of a conundrum this one. Um, the speaker uses uh, C's drivers throughout, and um, from what I can tell, these particular drivers, from my very rusty memory, um, were used in Dynaco A45 speakers, um, which are desirable, and people want Dynaco speakers. Um, but these Solovox ones aren't desirable, and yet, if my memory is right, it's the same complement of drivers. Dynaco uh, A50 used the 10 inch versions of these. Um, but I'm pretty sure the A45 uses these 8 inch versions. If that's the case, we have um, a driver complement identical to the Dynaco A45 speakers. Um, but the ancillary stuff, um, I'm guessing the size of the box, the crossover design, maybe, definitely the capacitor age. Even the wadding, the um, padding inside, I'm guessing none of that um, matches the Dynaco speakers that uses these drivers. It's amazing to think how the ancillary stuff can produce two very different speakers with the same driver range. Um, if indeed my memory is correct, and they are the same driver range. Um, I would research this and find that for sure, but um, I'm trying to free up space so I can decorate this room. So um, I'm not going to, I don't have time to restore these, so I'm going to take the drivers out and put them on eBay. Maybe someone who's a Dynaco fan can make use of them. The drivers go on eBay. The crossovers I'd include. Um, the cabinets, I don't know what I'm going to do with those. I need the space, so... I don't know. Recycle, maybe. But either way, it's been interesting. Some rather nice Seize drivers in a mediocre cabinet with parallels to the very desirable Dynaco 845 speakers. Hmm.